state space. Let's get back to that and we're going to do our first example. This one's got some of the work done for us, so it'll be a little bit easier than the other ones we're going to do. But let's go ahead and see what we need to do. Now in our problem statement, it says we're going to let x1 equal y and x2 is going to be y dot. And we're going to write the state space representation for the system described by this second order differential equation. Okay, so if it helps you visualize it, think about x or y double dot as being an acceleration. So then y dot would be velocity, y would be displacement. Okay, and u is going to be like the input force. So keep that in mind. Now, let's go ahead. We're going to write out the state vector. So that's kind of already given. We know x1 is y, and x2 is y dot. All right, so now we've got that. Now, what we want to do next is take the derivative. So if we take the derivative, then we're going to take the derivative of both sides of these equations. That means we're going to have y, or x1 dot, which is then going to be y dot. And now what variable represents y dot? That would be x2, right? So now we got x2. And do the same thing down here. So x2 dot is going to be y double dot. And what's y double dot? Well, we don't have anything over here, but we've got this equation. So notice y double dot is right here. We can solve this equation for y double dot. That's what we'll use down here. Right, so if you solve that, you get 2 times u minus 4y dot minus 3y. Now, I don't want to leave these y terms in here. I want to write everything in terms of these variables. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to set it equal to 2 times u minus 4 times x2 minus 3 times x1. All right, because remember, y dot is represented by x2. The y is represented by x1. So I'm just making those substitutions here. Now I've got a system of two first order differential equations. So now that I'm at this point, I can go ahead and do the matrix form. So that's what we'll do next. Basically, we want to write this in matrix form. That's all we're going to do. So let's do the left hand side first. So we've got these two right there. So x1 dot and x2 dot. And then that's got to equal our matrix A. Because remember, we had x dot equals ax plus b times u. So here's our x dot, right? Because this right here was x. So that means this here is x dot. Now let's do matrix A. So notice what this looks like. It's a matrix A times our state vector. Well, this was the state vector. So basically, we're just going to pull out the coefficients to these x values. So here, since we have just x2, let's figure out what we need. All right, so here's A. Here's that x vector. And actually, let's go ahead and write out B. And then U. So U in this case is just going to be right here. All right, so now we've got an outline. This might be easier. So now if we have this, let's figure out what goes in this top row. All right, so we're trying to get X1 dot. X1 dot we know is X2. So I need to put values in here that will give me X2. Now this top row, I should have 0 and 1. All right, and let's go over why that is. So 0 times x1 plus 1 times x2 gives me x2 right here. All right, and there is nothing multiplied by u up here in this equation, so that goes to 0. So all we did was write this equation in matrix form. That's all we did. Now let's do the same thing here. So x1 is multiplied by a negative 3. So that goes here. x2 is multiplied by a negative 4. That goes there. And then u, which is our input, 
and multiply it by 2 for the x2 dot equation. So now if you multiplied this out, make sure it gives you the same thing. We got negative 3x1 minus 4 times x2 plus 2 times u. That's exactly what we had here. All right. So there is the first part of your state space representation. Not too bad, right? You're just going to pull off the coefficients. Once you get this part done, it's pretty easy. It's just putting it in matrix form at that point. Now we still don't have a y equation. y is going to be your output, remember? And this is determined by u, the user. All right, now y is the c times x. Now x is this vector here. So let's write that out. So we get x1, x2. So basically this matrix C right here, this is how you figure out what output you want. So remember x1 in this case, if we said y was displacement, if you wanted the displacement out, we would want to get x1 because x1 is equal to y. All right. If we wanted velocity out, we would want x2 because x2 represents y dot. That's what we have right here. Y dot is velocity. Okay, so let's just put 1 and 0 for now. All right, so what that's going to give you, that's going to give you y equals x1. So that would give you displacement data. All right. Now, let's see. So this, let's make a note. So this C gives displacement y, because remember y equals x1. Now let's see what c would need to be if I want velocity. If I wanted velocity, I need x2. And the reason why we need x2 is because x2 is equal to our velocity term, which is y dot. Okay, so the C we would need for this would be 0 and 1. So then when you multiplied it, you'd have 0 times x1 plus 1 times x2, which gives you x2. x2 represents velocity. And then finally, let's say you want both of these. So if you wanted both, you would have two rows. You'd have 1 and 0, and then 0 and 1. So this gives both the displacement and velocity, all right? Because you're going to end up with x1 and x2. And both of those, one it represents displacement, one represents velocity, all right? So this C matrix tends to be the thing that confuses students the most. We'll talk about it more in the other examples. In case this still isn't very clear. It might make more sense when we get to a problem with an actual picture. Okay, and then after this I wrote down some steps. So these are just general steps you can take to get your state space representation. All right, first you want to find your equations of motion. All right, so you can do it the long way with the free body diagrams, get the differentials, or you could use impedance and then kind of go backwards, do the inverse to get the actual differential equation, however you want to do it. Once you get those equations, you're going to choose your state variables. Now remember, our goal is to get to our acceleration equation, our equation of uh, motion. So that means for each mass, we need position and velocity. And we need that because just like we saw up here, we had to have y and y dot. And we needed that because when we take the derivative, it gets us to y double dot, which takes us to this equation of motion. All right, so you got to be able to get to this equation. So for every mass, we want position and velocity. So if I have six masses, I need two state variables for each mass. Right? So keep that in mind. Now what you're going to do is once you have your state vector, you're going to take the derivative of your equations from step two. 
then you'll write it in state space form and then finally after that figure out what you want for your output and determine what the c matrix should be so that way you can write the y equals cx equation all right so that was our first example in the next video we'll go over a longer example that actually has a picture might be easier to see what's going on in that one so i will see y'all in the next video